like it. Yeah. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we're here for a special meeting to discuss the Stone Ridge Second Development Agreement, which was emailed to everybody. And also, you guys got that yes. Friday also. Yep. Okay. All right, so we'll open that up. Any questions, concerns from council? Thanks, Melanie, for getting that turned around, but mm -hmm. made the changes. Any questions you have or? The only question I have, I don't know, Melanie, if you got my email about I did. I was in trial today, but I did see it. Okay. I don't um, know if that has an effect on anything. No. So Just the name changes. I have, a, I have an LLC that's going to actually be the developer, so it's just a. Yeah. So we can retype that. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Teresa, anything? Did you two discuss the plan? Yeah, so I, I did have a couple of comments that I provided to uh, Melanie and Teresa, and I don't know if they got to Mike or not. Um, but there's some verbiage in there um, regarding a couple things. Um, number one was the uh, approved plans and specifications is kind of referenced in the development. It's a little bit of a different development because we haven't worked out this pond issue. So my recommendation in here is to add some language that the construction plans and hydraulic calculations associated with the pond um, if we go the temporary pond route, um, need to be reviewed and approved by the city engineer because we haven't submitted that. We haven't uh, got to that point yet in the development. So I think that's just something that we should we should add in there because we got to review those calculations and plans and make sure that we're comfortable with them. Um, that's kind of number one, which I think uh, to me should be pretty straightforward. Um, the second thing is regarding if we build this uh, private pond on private property, if it's temporary or not, how do we handle that? Uh, we had a similar situation on the um, left subdivision, uh, the south side of 14. Uh, we told the developer the same thing, hey, we need to build this pond down in the regional pond location where it fits. That developer um, either chose not to or was not able to develop with the downstream property owner to secure that land, so they built the pond on one of their kind of adjacent lots that they were planning on building a lot. So uh, we said, well, that's not where we want it. You're building it for your use only. Um, so we recommended to have a maintenance agreement for um, that area to basically own and operate that, that pond. Uh, this is something that we've recommended that the council consider so we don't have all these spot ponds all over. Another reason to kind of get to this regional ponding um, discussion. So that's something I think the council needs to consider or work through here um, on how we handle that just in the past practice on uh, previous developments. Which again, I think we can work through because we need to answer the regional pond question if that's the direction kind of everybody want, both parties want to go but if we don't I just want to make sure we've uh, talked about it at this point so okay does that make sense you want me to go that a little bit more detail yeah I get it. yeah what you want to add language for a maintenance agreement correct yep similar we did in the last subdivision and it really just kind of refers to the maintenance agreement itself I think doesn't it yeah, that's correct because um, at the end of the day if, if we own the re build this regional pond at a later date, like we would have left subdivision, then in turn, that lot could be filled and that pond could go away. Now we have more development land. Uh, but before that time, um, seeing as that developer is choosing to build a pond in a location that really doesn't fit our long term plan where we want it, then it, them, that, that developer in the meantime has to maintain that pond in that location. So if, if we're in the condition or situation that we're building this temporary, pond on the private property, who's going to maintain it, um, should be at least discussed. Is this really a temporary pond, if we do it that way? Because we would have decided that we're not doing a regional pond. In, in so, and again, we have a government agency It's a little bit different than a downstream property owner who's, a, in, the, in the left subdivision case, um, was a farmer that I understand the developer approached them, wasn't interested in selling their farmland for a pond. So, to Ms. Marty's point, there is, I, I that is the discussion on whether or not, if we can't solve it with the government agency that owns that area now, is it going to be a temporary private pond? Or at the future, we're going to build that regional pond, would be the question. Um, to that point, from our maintenance perspective, it costs us money to maintain these ponds. Having all these smaller ponds in this area isn't conducive to us maintaining them. Uh, we prefer not to. And if it's not a private pond, a temporary pond, well then we probably need to address that and make sure that we've secured either um, a drainage easement or secure the property itself, which I'm not sure how that's going to be brought forward if we go that direction. Okay. 
So is that something we need an agreement tonight? Or is that something we can have that if this regional pond doesn't happen, it goes back? Because we're going to yeah, we're gonna have to come back and... We're going to have to come back revisit. If it goes out on the private property, we just can't go do it. We have to then go and secure... Correct. Right or developer. Whatever. To to actually actually get that. We'll understand he's been working on it. So. Yeah, we have, a, we have an agreement with Shooty for the property. So we have the property secured. If we build it on Shooty's land, to me that's just a permanent pond for our subdivision and the city would maintain it at that point just like all the other ponds around town. Okay. Anybody else? Thoughts? Well, I was just to go, Brandon was saying <coughs> it's on, if it's on private property we just, before we we got to somehow make sure we can take control of it and we're going to maintain it. You're named in the, the city's okay. named in the agreement, so okay. it's, it's secure that way. Okay. And it, and it abuts a right of way, so there's no access issues with it either. Okay. Okay. No, I, the fact that the city is a partner uh, in this, I think we're somewhat in part responsible for some of the maintenance if not all. Um, I would much <laughs> rather see the regional pond go in and put whatever full court press we can on um, getting that accomplished rather than committing to a maintenance agreement. And if necessary maybe we can add language that we can um, open up negotiations for a maintenance agreement once we've got a determination on the regional pond. Okay. Well, this isn't something that's going to happen right away anyway, the pond. We have, he, once he gets his storm set up, then he's going to dig the pond, correct? If we can't build a regional pond right. to a city construction process, likely that we talked right. about last meeting. No, I don't. Just want to caution us a little bit. So we're prepared to approve potentially development agreement mm -hmm. um, that in turn would allow construction of homes and public infrastructure, streets, storm sewer, et cetera. Um, so I'll be very careful on this pond not being resolved and us not meeting state laws and our ordinance for stormwater management. So I think that's obviously the talking point. I just want to make sure we've talked about everything and make sure we know that there is an a end in sight. Because uh, when we first met with Mr. Marty, I said, I don't think you want to put a million dollars or whatever the number was into a subdivision and not be able to build houses and us have problems, obviously. So I just wanted to make sure we've talked about where this can go because it's a little unique for what we've done in the past so but I'm fine you know working things through I just want to I think the understanding is we're going to try to set up this regional if it doesn't work the backup is the pond on shootings correct correct yeah. which the timing has to right if we have to figure out a date or I need to have that's one thing that I wish was in the development agreement was an agreement so that I could construct homes until, say, July of next year. And then <coughs> the problem is that if the city and the county can't get together with the regional pond, then I have to have time to build the pond on shootings, which if, if the talks drag on into, say, September, then I'm not going to have time to build a pond possibly just depends on everything and then it's usually like a call. date like if we need to know a determination on the regional pond by August 1st well I'm not or not that or so much. allow them to put the pond in that spring <coughs> yeah if we need to have a pond by July of next year oh okay you know I don't know how you word that I'm just technically you know, we're saying you can't build a house without a pond, but we're saying 
if we put the regional pond in that falls through, then he has to put his in. He, we don't, he doesn't want to be held up. This is right. Correct. Yeah. Well, I, I think we can do that. It's kind of a unique situation. It's yeah. not a normal, we have to approach the county. The county has to be willing to to go along with that. And we have some other things we have to do. Well, yeah. On our end, too. But, and, it's, and the county benefits with the regional pond. So we all know when two government organizations yeah. get together, nothing gets done next week. Does the agreement as presented that they will build a private pond on Shuey's property if we can't get a regional one with the city meet the, meet the issues that you brought up? Um, yes, other than let me pull, pull here a second. Um, other than those two items, um, one construction plans and hydraulic calculations, which I speak for Mr. Murray, I assume he would be fine with that. There's more of a we want to review the plans. Make sure you're meeting our roads, make sure you're meeting the state law, federal law, et cetera. Um, and then reviewing the construction plan so we you know it works. I so I don't think that would be an issue. I think the, the bigger philosophical question for the council is we we've kind of past practice said we want to build these regional ponds. Right. If you're not prepared to build regional ponds or, or have the city figure it out, we've told you one, you're not developing, which has happened on the east side of town because we haven't been able to secure and the developers haven't been able to secure that area. We're in a little bit of a middle ground here. And if we build a regional pond and this issue goes away, and if we don't and we're building this other pond on the city property, private property, what is it? Is it a city pond that we own and operate like the other ponds? Or is it like this less subdivision, which we said wasn't, mm -hmm. and that developer agreed to maintain the pond until that regional pond is built? So if the city council is okay with saying there's access, and I agree with Mr. Marty, there is access to the parcel and there's enough kind of meat on the bones with the city's perspective on the pond functioning as a city pond and not kind of a temporary pond and then we don't want to operate the pond well then that, that's what we'll do and that's what we'll do through our public works staff so that's more of a question for the council on where that lies I guess does that answer the question it does and I may be showing my newness to this whole the whole concept but in on page five and I'm looking at the red line agreement as opposed to the clean copy Section G. It talks about the city accepting ownership of the storm water management pond. So, if the council wanted to go that route of it being a city pond that's owned and operated and maintained by the city, then I think we'd probably be okay there. I just want to. Yeah. yeah, so if we're okay with with the city own operating that pond is, it would be okay. And my general rule of thumb is if there's multiple subdivisions or a lot of city right away draining to those ponds, then there's kind of enough meat on the bones that the city needs to take over it because these agreements can be problematic too for having associations with other people maintain um, the pond. But again, on the left subdivision, we made that determination because that sub pond was almost entirely, or was entirely serving that development. We said, build in the right spot, we'll be good. And they said, no, we can't, we're gonna build it up here. And I said, one of two things, don't build because we don't have public infrastructure to support your development, the pond, or two, build a temporary pond until that's built and then you can regrain access to, to that parcel and fill the pond in. It's a little different, I, I get it, because it's more subdivisions, this is previous phases, this phase is um, some off-site area, I think would even drain in there. Um, and it's easily accessible. And to Chris's point, if two government agencies get together, we can't build a regional pond. Well, what's he to do? He need, he's going to have to build a pond at location. So a little different. I just wanted to make it clear that we've set a different pre we've set a precedence, even though this is again a very unique subdivision where it could be viewed as a city pond at the end of the day. Um, and then we'd actually have this conversation if Shudi were to develop, Shudi would have to incorporate that pond into his development. Okay. Um, and Mr. Marty, clarify for me. So we are, within that agreement with Shudi, we would have a drainage utility easement over that ponded area. Is that what's being proposed? Mm -hmm. As opposed to the fee ownership to the city? Right. Okay. So then let's just say Marty develops, and jump in here by the time I speak. Uh, Marty develops this phase. We have a drainage utility easement city maintains the pond. When Shudi's developed in the future, he likely would have to enlarge his pond or we would have 
to negotiate with shooting and what happens then. And then maybe that drain season is vacated, we build a different pond and we get fee ownership to outlaw that the pond sits on it. I think we would have to work through that. But as long as that drain season is there encumbering shooty, then I think we at least can have a conversation on what happens more more longer term when shooty's developed. If that makes sense. There are a lot of things in play there. So at the end of the day, I'm all, I just want to make sure it was out there. I'm yeah. okay if we maintain the pond as long as we can review the plans and we're good with it. And the city council knows what they're approving, I guess. No, and I appreciate you bringing up the, and I, I can just see the difference, enough difference with the one you're referencing, South 14, but on this Fair one, enough. it's I not. And I appreciate it. I don't want to set the precedent either. Because then we'll be building ponds everywhere and maintaining them. So uh, I guess I'm good with that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So. We're looking at the development agreement. We're covered on that part of it. You'd just like to add the review and approve the plans to it. And well that's something that you would want done anyway, right. I'm assuming. So, okay. So if we take the development as it is, uh, we're covered on the pond and the shooting property if that has to happen. Yeah. And hope it doesn't. Um, and then we would just add review and approve the plans prior to construction of the pond on it. And I'll touch base at Teresa on when the county boards meet. Uh, we're almost prepared to take it to them along with their other okay. 16th Street maps so we'll keep this ball rolling. Okay. Um, okay. I appreciate you know Marty's timeline here that I understand where he's coming from, so keep it rolling. Okay. So is that everything we need? <coughs> Attorney left? Um, so we're not putting anything in a home maintenance agreement and it's just going to address the construction plans and the hydraulic. Calculations for the temporary stormwater pond. Is that right? For the stormwater pond, so it won't be temporary. It'll be a city permanent uh, okay. pond with an drainage and utilities. I have that, so I can just make the changes and maybe email it to someone to print. Okay. So. And then, do we need to have something there that, uh, to your point about the date? I mean, you need to be able to construct houses to July, even if the pond's not complete. I would feel more comfortable if it was in writing, but I guess mm -hmm. as long as the city's are we covered on that in the con in the agreement? I'm sorry, I missed that. Say we we try to do it, go as long as we can with the county, it just isn't working, and then he's got to construct something in late fall or even early spring, whatever. That he's still okay building houses even though the pond's not complete. How do we put that in? He wants to set like a July 1st date. Or we'd have an idea that hey, if we if we can't get the regional pond done by this date, he has to have the other pond done by July first of twenty twenty. Houseman, can you make this happen? I know. <laughs> I don't want agencies outside of our group here to give us a different schedule than what we may be agreeable to. Okay. So you're saying leave it out? Leave the date out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that solves the problem. So that would be, <laughs> you're saying that if we're dealing with the county, still at that point, is what you're thinking? Yeah. For a regional pond? See, I, my thought is that the regional pond at that point would be Dead, and then I would just be building a pond. Yeah, no, I follow you. Um, now, if, you, if the city's open to negotiating with the county through the winter on it, that's fine. But that's we, up to the city. I, I think from from my perspective, that would be fine. I just don't want again outside agencies beyond the city or the county dictating to us that we have to go on a different schedule. It doesn't put us in a good spot. Because again, there's state requirements and state agencies that review these sort of things. Okay. I'd be fine with it, but we may be directed to build a pond sooner because uh, we allow construction and have it accounted for the pond. So we should leave the date out of it. And work with the developer to... Yeah, if it comes up, then we're just going to have to attack it when it comes up, I guess, at the end of the day. Okay. Everybody with that? Yes, we. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got.
we've got the development agreement and we'll add review of the plans and hydraulic calculations prior to construction of the other pond if that's the case. Anything else? Okay, I'll take a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Dan. I have a second. I'll second it. Thanks, Lonnie. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'll take a motion for adjournment. So Thanks, Mel. No second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourn. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. 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 Going on that slab house for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> 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 yeah, but we need those sometimes. You know. <laughs>